So welcome back, Torko. And thank you. We'll continue our discussion. Um, we've been discussing a little bit about the KAK and the MKA, the two organizations that you were a part of um, beginning in the 1960s, 70s, and, and ending in the 1990s. And I'd love to begin first by contextualizing a little bit the history of the organizations themselves, the structure, how they came to be. So maybe you can start by talking about how you first got involved in the KK and MKA, um, a little bit about what the intention was behind it and how it was initially structured and how that progressed over time. Mm -hmm. Well, the, uh, actually, the 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 communist uh, working circle, which is the name, it's not the communist workers circle. It's communist working circle. It's a circle of communists doing work. It's it's not something connected to the workers at at such. It was founded in in uh, in December uh, nineteen hundred and sixty three, and it was founded by by uh, members of the Danish Communist Party. And it was, it was uh, at the time, uh, uh, it was around, I think they were at least three, four, five hundred uh, maybe. And they were all people uh, connected to, to the emerging uh, 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 Maoism at, at the time. And, and they, uh, they had a critique of the Moscow Communist Party of being revisionist. This was this uh, discourse of, of uh, revisionism, which uh, which was started by the the Chinese in, yeah, I think in sixty one or or sixty two or something. The critique of of that, and they were they were inspired by this new revolutionary uh, spirit, and and they were of kind of. Um, uh, they it, it was a critique of 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 the uh, much was a critique of the foreign policy of of the Soviet Union that that it was very it talked a lot about a uh, revolution but it have this uh, about peaceful coexistence with uh, uh, capitalism it was going like a, a competition with the capitalism of producing the best consumer. Uh, products and they uh, and this was this kind of, of a critique and, and they thought if they could just um, be more revolutionary than, than the Moscow communists they could uh, get an influence on the working class and, and they could kind of, of um, explain uh, socialism in a in a in a in a better way that revisionism have done and and so on and 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 they thought that they could um, ha have a great influence on 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 the working class so what they wanted was to establish an a new communist uh, uh, party and uh, they go on for that for one two years, and but then they starting to analyze the situation in in uh, Denmark because they were not succeeding in in uh, in uh, this task they they had. The, it seems that the working class was rather immune uh, to, uh, uh, for for the for their critique of uh, of uh, revisionism. Uh, only a part of the student movement uh, absorbed and the and the anti Vietnam uh, uh, movement also uh, uh, absorbed. So uh, they began to developing this uh, this um, this idea that imperialism had kind of uh, corrupted the uh, working class, and this was the reason why they didn't respond to the revolutionary uh, uh, call. And this immediately, this uh, uh, created a split in this new organization between uh, a line which were uh, pro-Chinese still, but but uh, was convinced that there was uh, a, a profound revolutionary movement uh, in uh, Western Europe. It was the year of of uh, 67, 68. So there was this kind of, of uh, movement. So there was a split 
uh, with within communist working circle b- between uh, Godfrey Apple's uh, group, which uh, developed the parasite um, theory, and there uh, and the other side was a more traditionally uh, Maoist organization, which uh, which talked about. Uh, uh, the, the Danish peasants and the fishermen in the same way as as Mao talked about the Chinese peasant and the fishermen and, and, and the workers. So um, this kind of, of, uh, of a split um, came. But Apple was very keen still to to uh, to go into this uh, uh, matter of is it possible is it possible to build a a, a revolutionary movement or a, a, even a small revolutionary uh, group uh, within uh, Western Europe, is it uh, possible or is it not possible? Um, because he uh, was convinced that uh, the, the, the physical um, circumstances in our part of the world uh, was not very good for creating a revolutionary uh, organization. Huh? So uh, he uh, was not sure if it was possible to, to build this kind of organization because there was no there was no need for the struggle. It, it was something that you could choose or, or not choose in between uh, your studies or, or, or your work or, or something like this. And there was no need uh, for for uh, for the discipline, uh, it it was something that you could um, you could take on, or you could leave it. Uh, you could uh, go into this organization, and you could leave the organization. There, there was no circumstances in society with, which which demanded this kind of of organization. So he was very keen on discipline, actually. And uh, he wanted to, to create an organization in which the leadership could, uh, could uh, demand that the members did this and this and, and uh, this. I can see it uh, with this kind of organization I have been a member of uh, for the past many years. And, and, and now that you have this leadership, but of course, they have no command over the members. They, they are not employed and they are not soldiers, and you cannot uh, demand them to do this and uh, this. And it's create a lot of frustrations in the in the organizations, but because they, uh, in their year planning, they say, we will do this, and we will organize this, and we will make this conference, and we will try to mobilize this, and we will talk to this and do this and this. But half of it uh, is never done, because there are no people to uh, to uh, do it because they they uh, it's too ambitious uh, in uh, com- compared to to what you can uh, what you can do because you cannot command uh, uh, people to uh, to uh, do it it's not a a, a disciplined communist organizations like the Bolsheviks or or, or, the, or the Comintern organization or the Chinese communist or, 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 or something like that. It, it, it is a voluntary organization which you can join and you cannot join as you like. But Apple wants, uh, wanted to, to build this uh, very disciplined uh, organization to see if this was uh, possible. So there was this kind of very selective uh, rec- uh, recruitment of uh, of uh, people into the organization. He, it was only people who was let in, who was very, um, uh, it were, who was very interested and wanted to be part of of, uh, of a semi-professional or professional uh, organization in which the political work, uh, the organizational work, was the most uh, important part. It was not there. Uh, career. It was not their their family. It was the organization. So he. This was the this was the way that people was uh, recruited, and of course, 
and on on the other hand, there was a lot of people who were very interested in being part of this SOC organization and was very very active uh, sympathizers. But but they were they were too wild and they were they uh, they did thing without consulting uh, others or very few. And uh, I will also let a lot of these very very active uh, and very interesting people uh, pass by and uh, go and say they could not be part of the organization because the leadership could not uh, control them. They they were too. Uh, they were too much uh, individualist. So he wanted disciplined people, but not people who who uh, acted out of their own uh, will. They have to be disciplined and controlled and act in accordance to this kind of, of uh, plan. So it was a very strange organization. Oh, it was a very special organization with... with um, with a very special kind of of uh, of uh, people. Uh, if, so if I could just sorry yeah. if I could just add something in there. You mentioned quite often in the, in the text that this was a very Leninist in the sense of of Lenin interpreting Lenin in a very specific way to say. I, I think when you say that that you know for one thing on the theory that Lenin we have to look at Lenin's text on imperialism. But then even, as you say, with the organization itself, uh, a sort of hyper-Leninist, no ideas that, that criticize Appel were allowed to really be circulated. Um, so did that play a role as well in the in Appel's sort of personalist control over the ideas and it, it being sort of a, his organization at the end of the day? Yeah, there, there was a leadership of four three, four, five people. And uh, I have never, uh, there was no rules in the organization. I have, there were never no uh, elections. There were never no votings. It was not a, an organization or a party or something in the traditional way. There was a leadership and there was a kind of very high unity around uh, the political thinking. Uh, and this was, this was what created the the discipline actually that uh, that we have very high thinking about uh, ourselves and we were very we were, the rest of the left was very stupid and we have found the 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 the, the precious stone with the truth and uh, therefore uh, we we could uh, act actually. So in this way, it 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 was also a very sectarian uh, organization, and it was a very closed organization also. Uh, but uh, it attracts. I, I think we were around between thirty or fifty people. I, I'm talking about the period from all the time now from 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 sixty six to to 78, where there was this big split, which changed a lot. In, in this period, we were around 30, 40 people, and we had maybe, I think, one or 200 uh, sympathizers uh, around, which was interested in uh, our organization. And these sympathizers was organized in, in the legal support work for for the liberation movement, maybe mainly the African uh, liberation movement, and we also did a lot of uh, a lot of political schooling with this uh, sympathizers in 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 uh, in uh, Marxism and Leninism and imperialism and and and, uh, and so on. Yeah, but but it's true that that we were very narrow minded we we only looked at marx and engels and uh, and uh, lenin uh, actually yeah and uh, we had uh, and but but we were very uh, knowledge ab about this we have this i uh, have a study group where we read uh, uh, das kapital from one end to the other and uh, we have uh, most of us had Lenin's uh, collected works, and and uh, we have read a lot of it. So we knew a lot about uh, 
a lot about uh, theory uh, also. So it was a very good, um, sort of very good and solid uh, education and very. Abel was was uh, was very uh, in the Communist Party. He he had been uh, leader of the ideologic uh, schooling work, so he uh, he was very. Uh, knowledge uh, about the the a classic and he was good to explaining it so it was a very good thing anyway um this uh, this kind of organization it uh, it uh, broke into pieces uh, in uh, in 78 actually in in may 78 it uh, it uh, broke into uh, uh, many pieces, and it was the 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 uh, the thing which uh, which uh, t uh, tricked the the split was a was a campaign uh, against from the from the women in the organization against the uh, male uh, oppression actually, and it 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 became a very. Um, a very uh, violent uh, cam camp campaign and very uh, dramatic uh, campaign but it there was a lot of other issues there was this uh, there, there was a rebellion against this very centralized um, organizational framework and there was a critique of of uh, the lack of political uh, development and the dogmatism in the organization and there was also um, a critique of the hard discipline and so on. So there were many, there were many uh, issues which was um, which was uh, contributing to uh, uh, this uh, split. Um, and actually, so in in May. Uh, 80, uh, 78, uh, the the organization had a. a, a uh, two young members of the leadership, uh, Holger and Jan, they called for a huge uh, meeting, starting to uh, discuss uh, what to do and try to uh, create some kind of of, uh, of of sanity in the organization um, in this uh, campaign which were going on, and. Uh, after a few meetings, uh, the organization wanted to exclude uh, Godfrey Apple and his uh, partner Ulla from the organization, and it was actually uh, and they were excluded uh, from the organization with uh, with a huge uh, majority. Um, but this new, the rest of, of the organization uh, immediately started to break into two, three uh, uh, fractions after uh, uh, that. And this continued for a, a year or something. But the, the part which I uh, became uh, part of, uh, the Manifest Communist uh, Working Group, was the only one which uh, survived. And they took uh, the majority of the members with them, and they started to continue the work and the practice in uh, in uh, the old uh, organization. And they uh, began a new and development of the of the theory, opening up to uh, Emmanuel and to Wallerstein and to uh, Andre Gunther Frank and uh, all these kind of of people and trying to develop the uh, organization. And they also, and we also uh, made a new collective uh, leadership uh, of the organization and and uh, and tried to uh, um, democratic size the the uh, organizations with uh, and so on. So it's what's a a, a, a a very different kind of organizations uh, which which uh, came out but of course we had some of the same uh, problems because uh, which we have this uh, illegal praxis we still had to have a high level of of discipline and a very 
in 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 uh, in very um, closed organizations uh, in 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 some aspects uh, we try to have an an open side or also to recruit uh, new members but we also have this uh, very uh, closed uh, side of the organization and it, this this was a problem to have this kind of double organization all the time and it it, it created a lot of um, a, a, a lot of difficulties for organizing and uh, developing. Yeah. A long story. Okay. I, I'll, I'd like to, before going in, because I have more questions about, about Appel, I have more questions about the anti-gender uh, discrimination campaign and the split that occurred. But I want to start by asking a little bit more about how you got involved personally as well. That in, in 1971 you joined the KUF, so the mm -hmm. youth the youth organization, and I just want to ask about the level of outreach that the, the organization had with students, as well as founding the the Vietnam Committee. So how active the group was in protesting Vietnam, and that being sort of the first sort of public aspect of of the organization, as well as other things like you you talk about in the book. Uh, a protest against the World Bank uh, meeting in in Copenhagen, uh, a protest even against the the screening of the film Green Berets, um, mm. which was in in cinemas at the time. So, mm. how these public activities began to differentiate KAK from the Communist Party, and in that this was a more anti imperialist group, and also how you personally found your way into joining the KUF. Yeah, um, I I was at a at a at a boarding school in 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 sixty in sixty nine, um, and there I met uh, one of the sympathizers with uh, with communist uh, working circle, uh, here. and he has also some kind of personal uh, family background to China. Uh, so he was um, he was a Maoist, a, a very keen Maoist, and and he had connections to to uh, com communist working circle, and he introduced me to uh, this group. In this uh, boarding school at that time, we we uh, we did some um, uh, anti uh, pro uh, uh, North Vietnam and and uh, anti U.S. Uh, Vietnam War. Uh, Work so we were already a, a kind of of uh, doing anti imperialist work, but he introduced me to this organization and trying and I began to read their material and and they and and he invited one from the group from uh, to come up and and hold a a, a meeting uh, with us and and this was this kind of. Um, uh, immediately you felt that this was very uh, sin sincere people who uh, there was a um, very they there was a correspondence between what they said and and uh, what they uh, uh, did it was very close it, it was not just uh, empty work and this was this was um, this was um, very clear also in the Vietnam work they they did uh, the anti Vietnam uh, work actually some of the the members have of of uh, of uh, communist working circle have have uh, tried to um, to be uh, volunteers uh, on the of of the front national uh, liberation they went to the Vietnamese the North Vietnamese embassy in in uh, Prague and trying to become volunteers but they sent them back and say they should do work in uh, Denmark in instead of they had enough of uh, of guerrillas they didn't, they didn't need a, anyone from from uh, the outside so they started out uh, making uh, this um, at home, uh, collecting money for for the Vietnamese uh, struggle, and also trying to to radicalize the Vietnam uh, support uh, work in uh, in uh, Denmark. And one reason was, and and one example was this uh, attack when they wanted to show this uh, movie of the Green uh, Barrettes in in uh, Copenhagen. They didn't want to protest against this movie. They wanted to stop it. And the way they did it 
was that it went into the cinema and and smashed the the cinema and spread with uh, with some kind of uh, bad smelling substance of sulfur and and so no, so no one could could be in the cinema at all and they had to close the cinema and renovate it and the movie was was taking off uh, the screen and it it created actually a f street fighting not so much with the police but with uh, the hell's angels which wanted to uh, see the movie and was against the the movie so there was this um, this uh, street fighting with the hell's angels uh, uh, at the time uh, and also they they had there was this Every time there was a Vietnam demonstration in, in a Copenhagen, the, the, the mainstream leadership of the demonstration said that they want a, a peaceful and worthy demonstration. They didn't want they didn't want struggle with the police and they didn't want the riots. And then uh, the, the, uh, the communist worker circle said that we don't want any uh, uh, peaceful demonstrations. We want to show our anger and to uh, show the Americans uh, that we don't like them. So they wanted to attack the embassy and uh, smash the embassy. And so, so, there, so the confrontation was also often uh, very uh, um, hard uh, in this uh, demonstration. And the same was with the, there was a, this huge um, conference in 70 in Copenhagen of, of the World Bank. And the mainstream left, they had this, uh, that they wanted to protest against the World Bank. Uh, it's this demonstration, but um, the, um, uh, communist worker circle they had the slogan that they wanted to stop this uh, this uh, conference and they tried to stop it in many ways by blocking the roads and attacking the the colons of um, of vehicles going to and from the the conference with the participants to the conference with the, uh, and and also uh, attacking the restaurants where the conference people uh, had their uh, dinner in the evenings, and also trying to attack the hotels where the where the where the conference uh, participant lived, and so on. So they so this created a, a, a huge uh, street fighting in in Copenhagen for for some days. Yeah, and they are. Actually, also tried. There was some which was also trying to actually. Uh, th they throw uh, petrol uh, petrol bombs uh, into the conference center, uh, trying to start a, a, f a fire. But the automatic uh, system poured water on. So, uh, but the intention was to to stop the conference and not to protest. And so this way, they were they were uh, very radical. Hmm? And then the, the next step was this, that they wanted to take this protest against the Vietnam to broad it to other third, third world uh, struggles. Um, and uh, in that way, the organization took contact with the liberations movement um, in, uh, in the Middle East and in Africa and in India, uh, not in Latin America, actually, but in Africa and Asia and um, and uh, the Middle East, uh, we had we took contact with the uh, with the liberation movements against the the Portuguese co colonialism in Angola, Mozambique, and uh, Guinea Bissau, and um, in the Middle East, it was the Palestinians, uh, of course, uh, and also. In Yemen, uh, there was a liberation movement ag against uh, Oman uh, in Oman and the, the Dufar uh, province at the time. And in I India, it was the uh, Naxalist and um, yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, 
because we we wanted to spread out the support, but we could see that you know, that the Vietnamese would win this uh, struggle. It was only a, 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 it would take a few years, but after seventy five, uh, how should we carry on uh, this um, act activity? So in eighteen seventy, uh, Appel and Ulahaden traveled to Jordan uh, to meet with the PFLP for the first time. What was the, so you, you just were describing a little bit about the intention of going, you know, creating one, two, three Vietnams, right? And I, I guess, you know, with the, with the travel, was the intention to make a sort of political decision and come back to tell the group and sort of report, this is the status of the operations, this is the capacity, here's what we should do, or was this really the first time that anybody in the group was ever learning about uh, these organizations doing international travel? Had there been no. correspondence before? Yeah. No, actually, uh, there have been there had been uh, delegations in Lebanon and in Jordan in in sixty eight and sixty nine also. So it was only uh, Apple who traveled to Jordan in uh, in uh, in uh, seventy. There have been people there uh, before uh, making the 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 um, uh, contacts. Uh, the first actually drove from Copenhagen in in a cart uh, down through. Uh, uh, Poland and uh, and you, former Yugoslavia and uh, 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 Turkey and then into uh, uh, Lebanon and make the uh, contact uh, 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 with them. Uh, we made the contact I I initially through Palestinians living in uh, Copenhagen and and uh, we and they traveled with us and then we started to to making the the contact in in uh, in uh, that way yeah uh, so uh, apple's uh, trip was only one of, of many trips uh, at 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 the time but it it was both uh, how can we assist your struggle but it was also a kind of uh, Kind of political uh, exchange uh, at 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 the time. Um, uh, if you go back to PFP in in sixty in the late sixties and the beginning of the seventies, uh, it was a very actually it was a very open and very uh, interesting po political organizations. They have some um, very. Uh, bright people, for instance, uh, Hassan Ganafani was a very interesting uh, um, uh, person, and they were inspired uh, not only about uh, Maoism, but also from this dependency uh, theory and uh, and the new left, and so so it was a kind of um, not a very dogmatic uh, organization. So. We had a lot of uh, exchange uh, with them also in uh, political terms uh, at the time. Uh, it and and I think they were in this in this matter they were more advanced than than you have to uh, than the African uh, organizations actually. Uh, uh, I think they were more dogmatic and more. Uh, more old school uh, nationalists than uh, communists. They were very different, uh, actually. And I, I would love to discuss a bit about your personal travels as, as part of this, uh, this sort of phase of going abroad and meeting the different organizations. So we've discussed a little bit about uh, the first time we, we talked uh, your travel to Zimbabwe um, and to South Africa, I believe, as well. But, you know, we were discussing last time traveling to Tanzania, to Jordan, to India. Um, Appel, as it seems, traveled to China quite a bit as well. So there's that whole side of it mm -hmm. as well, that he was in China observing things. And you had the correspondence with with the Chinese embassy. Um, but I, I'm, I'm curious about, for you personally, the experience of getting to go abroad and meet uh, in Dar es Salaam, to meet all these uh, activists who are part of these parties and uh, I, the first time we spoke you described this feeling of 
um, of really being able to see the people, um, to see sort of the people who you were struggling for, whether it was visiting refugee camps and and learning about what this solidarity meant to the people on the ground. So I guess how did that how did that aspect of the international travel make the members committed more to this the struggle that you know it wasn't just uh, fighting for people who didn't or were anonymous, but you could put a face to the people mm -hmm. that you were struggling for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I I think it has um, a big uh, influence. Um, um, I don't know if if it's the same to today because it it was before it was before the internet. It was before maybe uh, so today. Many Western young people they travel uh, around the the world uh, very much maybe and uh, but they, at that time it was more exotic uh, i think and and uh, it was um uh, actually there there was also in in uh, in uh, copenhagen uh, in in denmark at the time there was also another organization which was uh, called uh, the traveling high school and they actually rented a bus and then they put these pupils of this high school into a bus, and then they went to to uh, Africa to uh, buy the bus, or to North America, or in in uh, India, and 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 so on. And then they also have contact with with popular movements and and liberation movement. And then they come back after after half a, a, a year and so on, and and then they try to see what have you learned from from uh, this uh, 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 travel and they they traveled in a very uh, simple matter they have to repair their bus themselves and they didn't have much money and and so on so they actually traveled at the same level as as the people who was and uh, we got a lot of sympathizers from 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 people who have been on this uh, uh, traveling high school actually, so I think this, I think this is, a, and I can also see it to to uh, to today in the organization I work in today. We also arranged uh, uh, t uh, travel to to the third world and people who have who have been there. It's a lesson for them, and they are more committed to the work when when they uh, when they uh, come back. Actually, so it's a good method of of educating people to to um, to send them on uh, this kind of of um, of travels. Actually, but but we have a very we had a very uh, fixed agenda when uh, we uh, traveled. We should we have we should meet certain organizations. We should discuss different matters with them. We should make a report, and we should maybe investigate in 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 something also in the country different aspects. And we should make a, a written report. So it was very formalized. It was not just a, a, a tourist. Uh, uh, it, it, it had a purpose and we have to make a, a report uh, when we came back on uh, on from uh, each uh, 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 travel and this also made them I think uh, this uh, strategy uh, better that we have this uh, this uh, deep understanding of the situation by meeting uh, the people uh, themselves you you I don't think you get personal committed by one travel. It's it's a longer a pro process when you have uh, relations with an organization for for a longer time. Actually, I think uh, PVP was the only one in which we have personal relations for a longer time. Many of the organizations we we supported, we we didn't have. Uh, much uh, personally uh, contact with because um, because uh, we were not sure of of their uh, security uh, on uh, on uh, their side uh, if 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 we could be frank uh, with them 
with the person we are we are talking with they could be infiltrated by by uh, agents uh, from the from the portuguese uh, um, intelligence service or south african intelligence service and maybe yeah so there there was also also uh, security uh, things to, to to take into consideration in these travels and and when the travels would occur i mean was this as simple as i mean there's some description in the text a little bit about uh the meetings with the leaders of the organizations but would it be a sort of discussion of uh i i, I know for example you discuss how it wasn't as simple as saying you go there and you tell them like for example you talk about how the raf would go to the pflp and say here's what we can do for you in exchange for what you can do for us they wanted they wanted the pflp to train some raf members for example to then go back but you weren't as interested in uh in what you could get from the organizations it was more about what you could what you could assist them with so what was the perspective but, but, going in but but be, be being uh, undercover um, sure. and not underground we we didn't need that uh, I, they could not teach us anything about uh, being undercover in in uh, in uh, in uh, Copenhagen and i don't think they could teach the only thing they could teach you maybe it's how to handle a, a handgun or, or something but this is this is this is not very uh, complicated uh, you don't have to travel to to a foreign country to know how to handle a, they could not teach us anything about security they could not teach us anything about uh, how to organize and behave in western europe uh, because then you have to have a, an intimate knowledge of of how society function and works and and the culture is in in copenhagen or in hamburg or 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 or, or in a other european city uh, they don't know anything about that in in uh, jordan so in that sense they could not uh, they could not te teach us any uh, practical uh, things and we could not teach them anything about how they they should uh, do their their their, their pol policy they know best ab about lebanon and uh, jordan and and palestine the only thing we could assist them with is uh, some kind of what do you need of of materials uh, support and technical uh, support and 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 so on so it was it was not that uh, it was not rock and science to to uh, to decide what to do and and not to do and then there was the whole political situation or, or, or we always talked politics first about uh, what's going on in the middle east and what is going on in europe and the world in in uh, in uh, general yeah and this of course we could learn a lot of from from both sides to have this uh, political discussions <clears throat> and on the other hand i'm i'm curious about the perhaps to to shift to think about when you were discussing with them uh if it was as simple as them coming to you and saying well we need uh you know this amount of weapons and this amount of money and they would sort of give you an itinerary or if it was the decision to do the the illegal work or the illegal practice came sort of spontaneously from the organization to say this is a way we can help and was it was it presented to the to the uh, the militant groups to say we are we are we are embarking on this decision uh we are going to take this route and this is how we can help um, i'm just curious about the sort of uh decision making and also with i mean reading the text it seems like there's a lot of debate within the danish media with this text um that was written by the the journalist uh, i'm forgetting his name but the danish journalist who wrote about the text because he seems to say that this this entire organization was just a, a a project like the raf that was just 
sort of controlled and there was no independent decision making. But I'm curious that you were taking the initiative to make these decisions to go into the illegal practice out of your political uh, analysis of the situation. But um, actually, um, when you meet with the liberation movement, for instance, in the Middle East, or I would say also in 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 uh, Africa, but especially in the Middle East, and if you work and if you talk them uh, with them, and you say uh, we are coming from a revolutionary group in uh, Western Europe and in in Denmark, um, they would kind of. Um, they would see it in their own perspective. Oh, you are a revolutionary, and then it's and if if you are a revolutionary, and you and 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 they take you on on that word and take you seriously, it would not be strange for them to 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 ask this kind of of uh, of uh, aid and this kind of of uh, help be big because if they were not do, doing it that they would say okay you're a re revolutionary but i know in your in your part of the world it's it's just something you say it's not uh, it's it doesn't necessarily have practical consequences yeah and of course some were surprised some who went there of our members were surprised that way they were uh, taking on the words and 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 they came up with different kinds of suggestions and they were kind of oh what am i what am i going into because they didn't because in our part of the world it doesn't ha it doesn't it this it does not have a consequence to to use this kind of of uh, words it's just uh, it's it's just something that you uh, I'm a revolutionary, but we don't have a revolutionary situation, so it doesn't have much more consequences that I study Marxism, Leninism, uh, and I go to demonstrations and I sign uh, this and that. It, it, it doesn't have uh, personal consequences in the same way. But in their thinking, when you are presenting and you're saying that, okay, yeah. Right. And I, yeah, there's something very fascinating about this point to say that there was a culture shock to see that in the third world, in the, in the struggles that you're visiting, these are people who are professional revolutionaries in the sense of, uh, of being committed and this being pretty much their whole lives. Whereas I, I think what's interesting when we talk about the group is that unlike other left-wing organizations we were talking about this the last time we spoke that this is this the words you used were this is a strange group of people people who are willing to dedicate two decades worth of their life to this type of militant struggle um who have to hide it from their family and there has to be some kind of personal commitment there and then just to compare that to the militants in the third world who as you're discussing are are making personal are taking very personal consequences. Hassan Gaddafi was assassinated by by Mossad. Um, countless revolutionaries are assassinated by in in the South African context, assassinated by the apartheid uh, spy industry. So I'm curious about how the encounter with these groups. If you if you were meeting people and then learning about even you know going to see the refugee camps. And feeling like this proved your analysis to a degree that the the European communist and the European left were not serious about revolution, that it was something they talked about, but it was not, they didn't have the the implications of it. And that by seeing in the third world people who were struggling, people who were dying, being displaced because of conflict, it was more of a validation to say that this is where the revolutionary energy or the revolutionary potential of the time period is coming from. I'm 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 not uh, I'm not saying that we were the I'm not saying that we were um, especially. I, there was a lot of other people doing 
uh, support work for for uh, Vietnam and for the Portuguese uh, colonies, uh, st uh, uh, the, the struggle against Portuguese uh, colonies and anti-imperialists. Um, there was a lot of support, uh, another kind of support work in, of course, in 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 Western Europe and and uh, and uh, North uh, America. But 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 they um, they had the analysis that um, that they okay they should they should support the liberations movement but they should also it was also very important for them to create support for the liberations movement in the broader population in north america and in in western europe and if it's best they could maybe influence the government of these of these countries to to have a more progressive uh, uh, policy, and and this is because they they still had this analysis that there was a basis for international unity between the working class in North America and Western Europe and and uh, in uh, in the the third world so they see it as as a connected uh, 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 struggle and when we were disclosed the whole left was uh, very much and uh, not the whole and the most of the left wing and also the solidarity movement the former ancient solidarity movement felt that we have betrayed their case because we have kind of putting them into a bad light, turning anti-imperialism into kind of terrorism uh, uh, and and uh, give them a bad, uh, um, we, we have spread this bad reputation uh, in the left by by using this uh, undercover method, not uh, not being frank with the working class in Europe, not being frank with the with the population in in the Western uh, uh, Europe. So there was this huge difference between our way of working and our attitude uh, because of our different analysis of the possibility to creating international solidarity uh, if this was uh, possible and again our attitude made us not only uh, at odds with our political system and our government but also at odds with the mainstream left actually also in in and not just in different political analysis but very profound uh, uh, way and therefore they uh, therefore they dislike us very very much uh, except uh, the autonome movements and the very radical left and and the, and and the beset movement and 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 so on there there was a, a certain kind of of, uh, of politics, which which were, were which were solidarity with us after we were disclosed, but but the mainstream uh, left wing uh, felt we have betrayed them in in many ways, and they still do. Right. Yeah, I can imagine. I mean, it just in terms of even thinking how the anti-imperialist politics are received in in the United States and in the West in general, it is a a view that there is a betrayal of working class struggle portraying the you know the labor aristocracy is is a, a dirty concept that isn't popular on the left i'm curious about to go a little bit back to the split for a second with appel and ula Houghton, um and the mka forming out of that how much of that was as we were discussing a little bit uh, an ego situation with appel's personalist control over the group how much of it was a a factor of this campaign that was started that was the sort of extension of the criticism self-criticism style of, of organization that you can just have these campaigns to to root out these these tendencies and also how much of it was a a, a, a debate over the politics i remember in the text to a degree appell was always pushing that the goal of this work was a revolution in Denmark 
at the end of the day. This, he was always preparing KAK to have a, a plan for when this revolution came. And and so he, he believed in that sincerely. And it seems like when MKA split off, there was less of a of a of this kind of a pellist uh there will be a revolution in Denmark. So you're sort of planning for both at the same time. There was more of a focus on the on the third world struggle and that being the sort of sole motivation. So I guess how this split emerges as a yes, a sort of personality conflict with the Pell, but also a, a divergence in, in political philosophy that you're MKA that split off was not as interested or, or focused on trying to prepare for the revolution in Denmark, but was was more focused on the illegal practice. Again, some of it was uh, political and some of it was personal and personal things um, played, uh, I would say, a huge role uh, because of this um, of this strange bunch of people in a in a in a kind of close the sectarian uh, uh, circle so 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 it was a, a, a mixture but 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 apple and was very keen on he always said that that the criteria for being a good marxist marxist is that you have a, a solid a solid analysis of uh, your own country and a solid analysis of what will bring a, a revolutionary situation in your own country. You have to know uh, how your own country works and you have to know uh, what takes us in the direction of, of, uh, of uh, socialism. And it could be it could be uh, national uh, contradictions and it could also be uh, principal contradictions in the in the world uh, system and he was very keen on this principal contradiction that that uh, it's a, you cannot uh, uh, you cannot only analyze what is going on in, on the palestinian level or or, or the South African level, or, or the Mozambique level, and what is going on between uh, Portugal and uh, and uh, the Angolian Liberation Movement, the MPLA, or, or, or so on. You have to see it in a global context, but because it would decide uh, the way the the revolutionary uh, struggle will go, and it will decide it it uh, its uh, success. And I think he he was right in in many of of uh, of uh, these things because it's, it I I think if you see it in today it's very strange that that a few thousand uh, Federians in in uh, in uh, Palestine only with handguns could create so much so much uh, trouble and uh, if, if you go to Mozambique and. And Angola and and Bissau Guinea again. It was a very uh, it was an organization only with uh, with maybe propelled uh, grenades and uh, and handguns and and so on. And how they could how they create this uh, this huge um, this huge uh, and strong uh, liberal movement and it has a lot to do with the different uh, contradictions on the world level between old colonialism and neo-colonialism between the socialist bloc and the, and the US and also between the non-aligned movement or, or the all the countries in in the third world struggling for national liberation and so there was a lot of outside which decided uh, the success of all the liberation movements at the time so he was very keen on on saying that that and what was he was saying is that you have to have an analysis of your own country uh, this is also uh, uh, a very big part so he yeah and but there was also, of, of, of course, all kinds of, of, of personal, um, personal uh, 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 conflicts. And this was the basis or, or, or 
for this personal context was uh, how much should we uh, prioritize the development of the political theory? How much should we put into doing different kinds of, of uh, praxis? Uh, um, sh uh, and also uh, the Ill illegal praxis, what is the status of this? Uh, and how far should we go? It's a dangerous uh, for the whole organization and, and the whole long-term uh, uh, project also. Um, and it's, uh, yeah. So there was a lot of kinds of, of this uh, kind of uh, discussions. And then up top there, there, there was this, uh, this uh, campaign which of course was in tune what was going on uh, at the time. There was uh, this, uh, the liberation of, of the women was uh, was uh, a very important struggle at the time, a new struggle on the, on the left wing. So it was, all, of course, influenced uh, by that. But I think it was also influenced by by um, by uh, Apple's wife, uh, who felt that maybe she was overlooked in the organization. So it was always it was a campaign which she also also tried to strengthen her position. And so it maybe it was also a struggle inside the the leadership. It's um, it's uh, even now it's uh, many years later. It's difficult for me to uh, to say what was up and what is down in in uh, this split. But the bottom line was that there was a lot of tension, which uh, blew up uh, the organization into many fractions. Uh, when uh, when the light was uh, lit uh, and then the whole things. Uh, so there must have been a lot of a lot of. Uh, uh, tensions in the organization but there were also was this i think solid core of of a theory and a and a praxis which continued after after the uh, the split for uh, for yet uh, 10 12 years i'm i'm curious with this dimension of it with the personal dimension of it as you mentioned so often getting involved with the political aspect of it when you're working with a core group of people for for 20 years and you begin to know them so personally and know about their relationships and and it is uh, a very almost familial uh, dimension to it i mean to a degree you're, you're describing people who are uh your close comrades and so perhaps the lines begin to blur in, in some dimensions, right? It's uh, from comrades to friends. And I just remember in reading this text and reading about Ula Hagen, you there are points where it's still unclear what her relationship with Appel was, right? There were dimensions that, that people who didn't know about their sort of uh, relationship were not privileged to know exactly what was going on. And so you have this blurred line where he is, as you mentioned, the the leader, there's no elections, there's no voting, and he brings in somebody who then begins to feel they have to have a more uh, they have to have more privilege and more power over the organization. I'm curious how, in in hindsight, looking back on the situation with the organization of the the group, if you feel that there there could have been different ways to organize this, especially with doing this illegal work that had to be so secure and had to be so private that at times could make an environment with people feel tense that there is i mean then you we've discussed as well last time about the aspect of surveillance that there's pressure from the state to a degree in in hindsight do you think that there are ways to continue this kind of i mean we we know as well reading about underground structures and how underground structures yeah yeah, just just yeah. to say, I guess to to put it uh, more simply, what is the the benefits of doing this sort of undercover work, and at the same time, what are the strains and stresses over time that you have with people that you're working with, and that create these sort of personal fractures? I guess. Actually, I think that that there there was like a divide between the professional and and uh, the private uh, in many aspects 
we were not mixing up in 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 our in our different uh, private life the 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 contact which we have was with the actually with the professional work with the organizational work and then there was this private life which was something else of course we could also meet uh, privately but actually actually it was mostly um uh, in a professional way that we uh, would meet because also because of of time actually actually because uh, the different kinds of political work the theoretical studies the legal and the unlegal political work took up so much time so there was uh, the rest of of the time was just private uh, relaxation time or or relaxation time so um, uh, so uh, I don't th I, I don't think this was uh, was a, there was an, I, I don't think that well, there were huge um, um, tensions personal tensions uh, after the split it was something before because uh, of the very centralized uh, structure and we had a much more open structure after after 70, 78. So we didn't build up this kind of, of, uh, of uh, tension, actually. What was the other question? Uh... I, I think that's a good answer. I mean, that, that does prompt me to think about uh, another question that I've been having while reading some of the information, which is on the, the note about uh, surveillance and, and security. Uh -huh. But, yeah, but, but I mean, uh, if, if I if I should make a, the, of, of of course uh, so sometimes uh, the work was uh, stressing and you could not sleep at night and there was all kinds of 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 problem. But through the years it went on on for nearly twenty years. So you you kind of learn to um, to live with that with that stress. On on the positive side. I think there was this um, this uh, feeling that you have you had a theory, and you had a praxis, and you had this uh, maybe maybe uh, uh, and they and they fit together. You have a theory and a praxis, which you and this praxis you felt was effective and change something had some some uh, effect you you felt that you were you were doing something which were important and when you have this uh, in your life that you have how do you see the world how do you analyze the world and then you have the opportunity to to do something which uh, you think uh, moves the world in the right uh, direction it's uh, it's it's not a bad feeling uh, so in in that way it was and this i think created the 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 lust to to continue the uh, the work it 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 feeded the 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 interest to uh, to do it the, the work it was not just um, a burden or something uh, terrible it was also something interesting and and uh, of course, you learned a lot uh, about not only about the third world and the organizations, and but but in doing this kind of, of work, you you get a knowledge of many 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 um, many aspects of of life and how things works in 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 many strange ways. Yeah. Um, I know a lot about my city because I, I have to analyze uh, where to go from one point to uh, another and how to get the best route from this point and the best escape route, how to do this and where where can you turn around a corner. And, and, and so you uh, there's a lot of all, all other, other things that you learn. Yes. You've also mentioned, uh, for example, just in the, in the time that you had with the group that not all not all your studies were always dedicated to this work so for example you mentioned having a dialectic study group within the organization that you thought it was important to study dialectics and to read and, and talk about philosophy um 
I'm I'm curious with the with that sort of bonding aspects of the organization, if you will, that one one dimension of it is trying to build connections with people, right? So you mentioned that you were brought into the organization by someone who was already a, a sympathizer, already involved. What was the process for for people joining? Was there a sort of initiation process that they would have to go through to ensure that they were committed, that they were up to date on this politics? Because for me, it's also, as we were just discussing, if most people on the left don't agree with this perspective of the labor aristocracy, would you have to build over time a study group, as you mentioned, studying all this literature to convince people of this of this hypothesis and then they would be allowed to join or was it something that you were always looking to work on and learn? But um, there, there, uh, when you when you become member of of the organization, there was no kind of of uh, of uh, uh, of course um, there was no kind of introduction course or something because this was done when you were a sympathizer. No one you uh, you were a sympathizer for maybe two years or three years before you became uh, a member of the organization, and at that time you you will get a lot of introductions to different kinds of of, uh, of uh, politics. And all our sympathizers was also sympathetic to our analysis of, of course, of, of our world because it was very different from from the from the rest of of the uh, of the left wing. Um, so uh, so it was not, but but uh, but this kind of um, of study of uh, dialectics is not the study of philosophy. It's uh, acquiring a tool for analyzing. It's a necessary necessary. You cannot study you cannot study Marxism or dialectic very well if you not have a certain purpose for studying it that you need to know about dialectics because you need to have this tool to do your analyzing eh? and you have to know about the political economy because you have to analyze the political economy of that country you live in or that country that that you support a, a, a group in how does it function because you have to you have to push to the right aspect in the in the contradiction to move and so so it it all our studies had a very um, a very uh, concrete uh, perspective and a very concrete agenda and a very concrete it was not just now we will read about the civil war in France, what Marx have read about the civil war in France. No, we had to read about it because we want to know his analysis of the state. How was he looking at, at the state? Because we are interesting to analyzing what is the state in Denmark? Uh, what is uh, what uh, is it a capitalist state or is it a state with, a, with shared uh, power between the working class, or or are there special class who, and you know, it it also it when we make study, it o always had a very specific specific purpose, which was connected to our praxis, or, and also and and this is the only way that you can do good studies actually, because then you have, yeah. You you have this part in in your interview. Where, which is a, a part that I really love and I think about it quite a bit, where uh, the interviewer asks you about the text that the group wrote called What Should Communists in the Imperialist Countries Do? And your response is to say, this is the, this is the kind of mode of thinking that was the kind of appell logic, sort of hyper-Leninist logic of you have a question and that you find an answer, you say, what what will be done? And then you just give an answer and that's the answer. And I, I appreciate that you pointed that out to say that over time, your thinking shifted away from these, these easy answers to questions to say, what should be done? And then you give the answer, what should be done? But over time, it seems that the by actually delving into dialectics and 
and progressing with a mode of thought and a, a sort of dialectical mode of thought, you didn't you didn't sort of land on simple answers to questions. You have a far more a dialectical understanding of the problem and and the mode of of thought that has to answer that problem or analyze that problem. So I, I guess how did the how did the mode of thought change throughout this study and this this uh, practice as well that you weren't you weren't looking for simple answers over time. You weren't looking for a, a what must be done uh, simple answer. And in hindsight, I think definitely you from that from that interview, it seems like you were trending away from these simple answers to, to questions of communists should practice this exact way. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, first of all, I, I think that, that you will see that uh, even if you make this kind of, of practical, very practical, what should be done, and then you see what happens afterwards, you, you will see that there is very often a very big difference. If, if you, for instance, read um, this text of, of Lenin, what should be done, and so on, and especially if you read his, he, he wrote a book in in uh, 1916 called, called the state and the revolution and in 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 which he wrote about um uh, the state in the capitalist system but also the state in 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 the in the socialism and and if you see the kind of state which the bolsheviks uh, constructed in 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 1918 it was very, very different from what he was thinking that he could do or should do just two years before. Uh, it was impossible to go on with the line. He, the, actually, he, he, thought, he thought about a, a state who, who, who would withering away uh, when they constructed socialism and then they built a very, very strong uh, a, a state. And, and so there... <laughs> Um, so there is this big, uh, uh, I think, uh, this uh, uh, con con connection between um, often what you think you you can do and and what will happen afterwards. But but uh, and there's all, I, I and I, I can also see that that um, it's you you have to train and you have to practice and you have to study di dialectics all the time because um, there there's a tendency that for instance we we thought that this process of of uh, liberation movement going on to uh, proceeding into um, into economic liberation you know from the from the 60s to 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 the 70s more and more liberation movements, more and more re revolutionary situations would create uh, socialist uh, third world and, and, and so on. We didn't see the other aspect uh, which was coming up and closing this uh, period. We, there's also this thinking that things will go on in the same way as they are now, just expanding. It's the same way with neoliberalism that you were thinking that this neoliberalism would just continue uh, and and be stronger and stronger and and you you have it with the uh, with negri and uh, heart that the, the, actually they are very parallel to fujiyama's uh, theory uh, also because they think that neoliberalism was expand and expand and just create one one empire uh, uh, and they didn't see the 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 other aspect, which neoliberalism, uh, there was always this aspect between a transnationalism, capital, and and different kind of nationalism and national states and national se uh, sentiments in the po population created a response. And actually, neoliberalism was the product of of this dialectic uh, uh, process, which ended it. Which uh, no one saw this uh, 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 coming. So, this exercise of of um, seeing things in a dialectic process uh, is you have to have it in your forehead, and you have to be very conscious of using dialectic not to not to turn into this. Um, 
uh, on dialectic just expansion of the trend which which are going on now uh, there's always a counter tendency which uh, which will uh, steer the process in ways that you might not think hmm. so this way of dialectic have uh, you have to think when you get to get more and um, more better answers to your to your uh, questions uh, i think yes yeah i i think um well Shall i've we... had you i've had you for a long time so i think what i'd like to do is stop here and possibly continue i have many many questions but <laughs> i think i think i'd like to let you enjoy the rest of your day and not answer questions the entire day but um but so we'll we'll arrange with Peter to do a yeah. another one, and we'll focus more on Emmanuel and uh, yeah. the questions that he had. But thank you so much, and and thank you for for answering the questions. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.